Uh, I love this. This clearly is chat jippetied. Where's this guy even looking? Uh, learn to code the slow way. All right, first off, I do want every last person here to know that this is a boot.dev sponsored article read. Uh, Wags Lane, as he is named inside this chat, oh, so aptly named somewhere in here, he was just talking, is an awesome dev. He's created an awesome uh, website for learning how to become a better back-end developer, and it's kind of gamified, and it makes it more fun. A sellout. Hey, you're not allowed to call me a sellout, seller. Uh, but this is an ad. Always have been, I try to always be very upfront about that so you never feel like you've been bamboozled. I'm not going to work it in at the end. We're doing it up front. All right, let's do that. Ever since starting boot.dev, I've been flooded with what I call quicksand questions. Ooh, ooh. On the surface, a quicksand question seems like a good question. If you could answer it, it would catapult you from where you are, night shift at Wendy's drive-in, to where you want to be, telling your friends that you work at Netflix, by the way. <laughs> I can tell you this much. You never tell your friends. I can tell you don't work at Netflix because you never tell your friends you work at Netflix. You know why? Because in IRL, when you say you work at Netflix, you know what you get? Hey, you get a free subscription. You know what Netflix should do? You know what they should do? Hey, sit down. I'm going to tell you what Netflix's business plan for 2025 should be. Trust me, this is a great one. Every effing time. You know what I say to people in real life? Oh, where do you work? Oh, I work at a startup. Oh, what do you do? Tech? Tech for TVs? Oh, cool. That sounds hard. Yeah, it's pretty hard. Honestly, that's it. I, I, I literally never tell people because it is just the worst experience. Quicksand questions are all about finding shortcuts. I need a developer job in three months. What's the best way to do that? Ooh, I like this. I've seen you laid out 20 courses in your backend learning path, but wink, wink, which ones can I skip? Ooh, I like this. Quicksand questions. It reminds me of, I believe Mary says this in Lord of the Rings book one, which is, uh, shortcuts lead to long delays. Shortcuts lead to long delays. I absolutely have always loved this phrase. Pippin. Pippin says it. It wasn't Mary. It was Pippin, you dummy. Okay. Anyways, I've always loved that that phrase because it's so much of, of software engineering is attempting, fool of a took, fool of a took, uh, is attempting to shortcut things. And I argue that don't ever shortcut. Whole asset instead. Work harder instead of trying to, you know, work harder instead of work sm or work smarter instead of harder. People use that expression to shortcut all the time, right? You should work smart, be smart, but you got a you got a full asset. Stop half-assing, right? Uh, what's wrong with shortcuts? Now, I want to be clear: there is absolutely nothing wrong with wanting to take the shorter path toward a career goal. This is true. Uh, that's called wisdom. You take the path, you take the shortest and most direct path to the place you want to be. Absolutely. Anything else would be insanity. If there was a pill to turn you into a senior developer overnight, I'd encourage you to pop that sucker. Good advice. In theory, educational min-maxing seems like a solid strategy, but in practice, it doesn't. Uh, it just doesn't work. Why? Because the destination is unknown. Dijkstra's algorithm is great if you know where you're going. If you don't, you need something else. It's a fact. No one knows where they're going. Uh, okay, interesting. Let's let's find out. The tech scene is a cluster f asterisk of complexity. I learned like 10 different programming languages in college, and even three years into my degree, I still don't know that I ended up working as a back-end engineer writing Go, or I still don't know uh, why that I ended up. Okay. Uh, I interviewed for all sorts of nonsense, from embedded systems to front-end development. Yeah, turns out my uh, prologue classes didn't help much in my first interview. But you know what? It didn't hurt. And now when someone says it's a de declarative system, my facial expression doesn't betray my ignorance. <laughs> it's a declarative system. I know this. <laughs> that's, a, I mean, that's, actually, that's, actually, that's actually pretty good. This, this is a fact. Like, that's why, I, I, you know, again, I, we just got done explaining this via Excalidraw, right? We just got done talking about this via Excalidraw. But having a breath, like, it's good to have that good T curve, right? You want a, a mastery. You want to start developing a mastery in something. But I think people pick the first thing as the thing they're going to master. And then their T curve, well, it doesn't look much like a T curve. You know what I mean? It doesn't have much of a T. It's more of like a, just like a, just like a little bit of an eye. It's, you know, and it's just like I learned the first thing and now that's the only thing I'm going to do. Where you should try a bunch of stuff. I think it just genuinely helps talk about stuff. And when people perceive you as someone who can talk about a lot of things, you just get way more 
uh, credibility and people will trust what you say a lot more. It's, it's wild. If you knew exactly what concepts you need to master to pass your first interview, then you, you could, might, or you might be able, come on, Lane, what is this? You might be able to find an effective shortcut. The trouble is there is no precise subset of knowledge that will always be enough to pass every possible first interview. Exactly. This is why I don't like, there's a lot of people right now discouraging lead code saying, Oh, you don't need to do lead code or saying how much bullshit it is. You know what I say? It's part of that secret handshake, baby. I don't know what the handshake's going to be, but it's part of it. Do a little bit of leak code. Get kind of good at it. You know why? In case they decide to toss a leak code question at you, you're already prepared because you've done 20 of them. You don't need to do 900 of them. Maybe 20, 30, 40. Spend a weekend. Get to know it, you know? Every company has their own janky tech stack. This is a fact of life. Every PM has their own vision of Agile. This is a fact. Every hiring manager has their own seven-step interview process. Facts. Every job requirement uh, requires different bits of arcane knowledge. Facts. You have no idea what you're, uh, you'll be doing day-to-day at your first job when you, start, when you are starting to learn to code. I hear people say things like, I never even use my DSA skills at work. And upon further inspection, it turns out they are a WordPress developer. <laughs> Don't dunk on Lambo Wang, okay? You can't, you're not allowed to do that. And also, literally yesterday, I used a data structure and algorithm from my time learning algorithms. Uh, it's actually super important to have these in your back pocket because when you get presented a problem that's extremely hard, there can be a solution that's trivial. But if you're unable to know, if you don't even have the language to describe the set of problems you're looking at, you are literally reinventing it. So I shouldn't be interested in the shortest path. You, uh, you should. It's just not where you think it, uh, you'll find it. The shortest path to a job as a programmer does not involve minimizing the amount of things you need to learn and build. That sort of thinking results in a much longer, more mentally exhausting journey. Something like this. Jump directly into web framework, probably Next.js uh, since you're basic AF. Yep. <laughs> Got him. Find you have a talent for building to-do apps. Realize you can't build a hello world without a tutorial. Attempt to remedy that by doing more tutorials. Read on Twitter that actually Rust is the best language. Admit defeat at the hands of the borrow checker. Repeat steps one through four n times where n is a d4 roll times your stubbornness. You just gave the seven steps to tutorial hell right here. This is actually super beautiful. It's super beautiful because you should be able to write or at least conceptually have 30 to 50% of what Next.js does in your head. Like file-based routing, just take a second to think about what it's actually doing. Why is that only in JavaScript or it's a pre-compile step in other languages? Just take a second to think about that. What are they doing? Well, they're using FS to crawl your repo's file system and build the paths out as URLs and literally probably putting it on an express app, right? That's like, that's what it's doing. It's just doing the express for you. It's not like crazy. Just something to think about. It's Apache in its first version. Boom goes the dino. It's literally a patch. It's an HT access where it's generated based on a file tree, on the find command. All right, the shortest path, or at least the shorter path, usually looks like this. Learn core programming CS concepts in some language. Tentatively decide on the kind of programming you want to do, front-end, back-end, mobile, etc. Learn the fundamentals of that kind of programming and technologies well-suited for it. Never stop learning and building while you search for a job. I would, yes, and so a big thing I would add on there is when building, build something that you want to use. I think that is a huge, just a huge requirement. And then I would also toss in, build things in areas that you don't know a lot about. CLI tools are one of the easiest ones. Understand the CLI, right? Build projects to gain a basic foundation. And when you get stuck, don't look for a tutorial. Google your way into the building. Meaning that you could look for a tutorial, how to create a to-do app in Svelte. Okay, fine. How about, how do I color a square? Okay, that's how I color a square in HTML. All right, how do, I, how do I get data in Svelte? Okay, this is how I get data. Okay, how do I make a connection to Terso? This is how I make a connection to Terso. Okay, I think I could do this. Like, extend your ideas. You know what I mean? Don't look for the tutorial. Build the tutorial yourself. Uh, you could use ChatGPT, but I, I, I worry about falling into the tutorial hell state, right? Which is that you're not actually 
step-by-step -step learning how to solve a problem by Googling. Instead, you have the seven steps it takes to build something in which they're hiding the 600 steps they took to get there from you. The real thing is, is that people screw up here, 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 here. Oh, got one good step in here. Here, 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 one good step here. Here, 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 one good step here. And then the tutorials, A, B, C. And you're like, oh, it's that easy. You missed the learning. Tutorials aren't for learning. They're for seeing how someone else does something. They're, that's what they're for. So you should already know how to, honestly, I get way more out of a tutorial when I already know how to build it. Then I can go, oh, their steps are different. Oh, I wonder how they got there. Oh, this is what it does differently. This makes sense. Don't get me wrong. This second path still isn't short. Programming isn't easy. Sorry if you were told it was. But if you're willing to put in the effort, you can avoid an aimless uh, stroll through the ninth circle of tutorial hell. Absolutely. Which is also very cold. Don't be scared of work. Folks spend eons trying to find the shortest learning path or trying to avoid learning things that they'll never use again. They're fine wasting months or years learning absolutely nothing to avoid any unnecessary work. Why not bite the bullet and risk spending a few days learning something that's not directly applicable to the job you'll eventually land? The point of, I mean, my personal point of learning or growing is to explore the things that interest me. You know what I mean? The things that interest me are the ones that are going to get me to keep going. Those are the things that are going to make me learn one step more. Let's be a bajillion percent honest. Some folks are looking for good old-fashioned get-rich-quick scheme. After a few weeks of struggling with loops, they'll give up and purchase an AI-powered crypto trading bot on Fiverr. Don't be like those folks. Becoming a software engineer is not a get-rich-quick uh, scheme. It's a get-upper-middle-class-slow cla uh, scheme. <laughs> it's actually it's a great statement. Get statistically above median income, but it also takes 10 years of really hard effort to get somewhere where you get something. <laughs> Uh, the trick to making it, you actually have to get good. So instead of copy-pasting haphazardly from Stack Overflow to fix the next error you encounter, take an extra minutes to figure out what it means. I can't begin to tell you how many PRs I've reviewed that fix something but are just patch of a patch because the dev never grokked the underlying problem. For example, an ex-Java dev, it's always a Java dev, finds, some, <laughs> finds that sometimes this function in Go panics. Send email. So they go straight to Google and find that panicky in Go can be solved with a recover. So they open a pull request. Ba-bam, ba-bam. Okay, this kind of works. But a better developer would try to understand and fix the underlying problem in the code. They would add nil checks or just stop using pointers altogether for this function. Real talk, that is great. I've been guilty of, I, I, I've been guilty of this. We've all been guilty of this. Sometimes it's easier just to take this step. It just is. And sometimes for your job, you have to take that step. So learning when to do which one is also a skill even onto itself, right? Sometimes you just have to be like, hey, yo, to fix this properly is like two weeks worth of work. To fix it now is a Friday afternoon mentality. It's, it's true though. Sometimes the Friday afternoon mentality is the greater of the two. You want to have a bias towards becoming better, not reaching the end. Ooh, I love that. There, is, there isn't an end. There's too much to learn out there. The scope of all of the software engineering is larger than the scope of your last program's global namespace. Facts. It's not the advice you wanted. Getting fit, giving up addiction, building a business, and yes, getting your first dev jobs are all hard. Don't make it harder on yourself by wasting your time searching for shortcuts. Learn evergreen foundational stuff. Build uh, projects that interest you, and you'll be amazed how far you can get in the last year or two of consistent effort. This is really good. I like this. Thank you for this. Elaine, this was a great article. I actually, this was actually, this is just 10 out of 10 advice. Okay. This is why, again, I, I do recommend boot.dev. Remember, I make courses on front end master. So technically, this would be like a direct competitor in some sense. They're really good. I really trust what Lane has to say, and I think that you should go and check them out, okay? Even though this is an ad, I actually believe that because Lane's a badass. The name is the Primogen.